Hey guys, it's good to be here with you tonight. Um, finally trying to catch up on some uh, Bible reading. Um, lately I've been trying to get through some Bible reading, reading through the Bible as we've been doing this journey, but uh, a couple times uh, the Lord just spoke to me and um, I just felt led to talk about some other things. So um, tonight, Lord willing, I'm trying to get to Mark 4. Um, I'm trying to read Mark 4 for the last couple of days, but hey, I'm not going to complain about um, the Lord speaking through me and giving me words to say. So I uh, hope you guys are blessed tonight. It's Friday and uh, just did some running around, uh, just, uh, just having some fun in the yard with uh, Matthew, my stepson, and um, just uh, having a really good time tonight. Took my oldest son out, um, out to eat, went to Grinders. And uh, then we went and uh, walked around Walmart for a little bit and uh, and then ended up home with some boxing gloves that I bought from Walmart, some blow up inflatable boxing gloves. So me and Matthew and, and then Matthew and Sarah uh, got to box it out and have some fun outside. So it was really fun. So already my weekends uh, kicked off to a really good start and um, looking forward to the rest of the weekend being really good. So. Um, so before we get in the word tonight, let's uh, just say, say a prayer, ask God to be with us tonight and to um, bless his word. It's already blessed, it's already anointed, but just ask God that uh, he be with us here tonight as we read and uh, that he would have his way, praise God. Father God, we thank you for another day you've given us. God, we thank you for everything you've done. Lord, you are so worthy of all the praise, glory, and honor, God. Lord, there is no one like you in all of heaven and all of earth, God. Hallelujah, Lord, we we lift your name on high, God, because you are worthy, Lord. I ask that, Lord, the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, God. Hallelujah, Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you for your instructions. God, thank you for this manual, Lord, so we know how to live life and how to treat people. Hallelujah, and how to prosper, God, and how to make it to heaven, and uh, how to use our tools to beat down the enemy thank you lord lord we thank you god that this bible is powerful sharper than any two-edged sword hallelujah that it divides and that it helps and that it conquers lord write these words upon our hearts and our minds have the holy spirit bring it forth in the time of need lord help us to remember these words so we can teach and preach and witness lord and pull people from the fire and we thank you for it in jesus name all right, let's get on. Mark 4, a parable of the farmer scattering seed. Once again, Jesus began teaching by the lake shore. A very large crowd soon gathered around him. So he got into a boat, then he sat in the boat a while, while all the people remained on the shore. He taught them by telling many stories in the form of parables, such as this one. Listen, a farmer went out to plant some seed. As he scattered it across his field, some of his seeds fell on a footpath, and the birds came and ate it. Other seeds fell on shallow soil with underlying rock. The seeds sprouted quickly because the soil was too shallow. But the plant soon wiltered under the hot sun, and since it did not have deep roots, it died. Praise God, we have to be rooted and grounded in God's word, okay? And the only way for us to grow is to know. All right, the Bible says that the per people perish for lack of knowledge, for lack of understanding. Okay, so when we are not feeding off the Word of God, then we are starving our spiritual body, and we are starving out um, the spirit that helps us um, and leads us and guide us, guides us. So we we are basically. In other words, we are basically, basically running our spiritual man out of gas, okay? We need to be fueling um, our spiritual man with the Word of God and with fasting and with much prayer. Sorry for the air conditioning that just kicked on I'm down in the basement. Um, hopefully you can still hear me. But uh, we need to be feeding our spiritual man with uh, the Word of God, okay? Just as much as our bodies need to eat, 
natural food. We need to eat in the physical. Um, a spiritual man needs to be fed as well. So it is important that we are, that we are feeding the spiritual man. And uh, I would say in these times that we are living in now that it is more important that we focus on feeding the spiritual even more than the natural, guys, because we are fighting in a war. There's a warfare going on. And I'm not going to veer off into that path tonight, but there are a lot of things going on in the background that a lot of us um, are unaware of. And there's a lot of things that are getting ready to take place, guys. There's already a lot of things that have taken place. Um, I just want to stop and give God praise for Roe versus Wade. And uh, I won't spend too much time there, but you know, um, all in God's time, you know, people have been praying for that for many, many years. And uh, I won't, I won't go into too much detail on it. Although I will not bend and I will not bow on my belief. Um, I believe that abortion is murder, and the Bible says that thou shalt not kill. And the Bible says that we were knitted in our mom's womb and our mother's womb before our mother even had us, before um, we even were conceived. Um, God had a plan for each and every person so lives matter all lives matter babies matter okay so I'm glad that um, that God wins in the end and he certainly will um, a lot of times we live in a, in, a, in a clouded area a clouded time in our life where um, we look around and we can easily see that there's nothing but pain and darkness and and disaster and murder and, and mass shootings and, and all kinds of things going on out there and and uh, I've often wondered where is God um, but God is still on the scene and God is still on the throne guys and uh, he's not gone on vacation um, he is still overseeing and when God says it's time for something to start or stop well it's time for something to start or stop um, when God steps on the scene and he says he's had enough then he's had enough and uh, he let um, things go on for so long but uh, this is God's area in time and uh, he put a stop to it and uh, I know it's a touchy subject for a lot of people and uh, I know things happen and I know that there are circumstances that um, would make it very hard to continue raising a child um, that would be unwanted or unplanned um, or if the child had any kind of disabilities. But you know, I've seen God heal and I've seen miracles take place and I've heard of miracles taking place. If God can open up deaf ears, open up blind eyes, if he can hear the, heal the lame, if he could heal leprosy, um, if he could heal um, the woman with the issue of blood, um, if he could heal the man in the Bethesda pool, praise God. If he could heal uh, the man in Capernaum that got lowered in by the four men that raised the roof to lower the, the guy in because they couldn't get to Jesus any other way. If, if God could do that for them, certainly God could miraculously heal somebody that was disabled in the womb or if you knew that your child was going to have some kind of problem or issue and this is a touchy subject guys and uh, I'm not going to get into it in too much depth tonight um, but I have the right and the freedom to tell you what I believe and in my opinion you don't have to agree with it um, but the Bible clearly states that thou shalt not kill. And clearly, if you are a follower of God, truly having the Spirit dwelling inside of you, um, I'm sure that you would be convicted that, uh, that the abortion process is not of God. Okay? And uh, so we have to be very, very careful on, uh, on what waters we tread. But nevertheless, we cannot dilute or pollute the Word of God, okay? We cannot water down the Word of God to make it fit 
our lifestyle, okay? Just because, just because there, there's something going on in your life, or if there's something going on in your parents' life or your children's life, or if you got a best friend that's experiencing something or going to do something, we cannot by any means, no matter how much love we have for man, turn and twist and corrupt scriptures and water it down or add or take from the Bible in any way, shape, or form. Um, this is a um, um, dangerous area. Okay, and God warned us that we, we better not add or take from the word. And a lot of times we like to water down the word and make it fit our life. Um, we have a loved one that's in sin and we would like to twist scriptures around to um, make it look like they're doing okay and that they're not in uh, hell grave danger. Um, but guys, the word is the word. God's word never changes. God never changes. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever, and he always will be. Okay, this is this is hard. Um, sometimes this, this hits hard. This hits home sometimes, okay? Um, and uh, I often try to put myself in people's shoes and, and wonder, okay, well, you know, if I had a child that had this or did this or was this, you know, it still does not change the word of God. You know, I'd, I'd have to tell my child as much as that I love my child. I'd have to tell my child, you know, hey, look, I love you. You're my child. You'll always be my child. But I don't agree with this area of your life. And it goes against the word of God. Because guess what, guys? No matter if it's your child, no matter if it's your mom or dad, it doesn't matter. If it's going against the word of God, it's going against the word of God. And we can try to twist and manipulate it all that we want, but when the rubber meets the road, sin is sin, and the wages of sin is ultimately death. And there's no way around it, okay? We cannot, I repeat, we cannot afford to be watering down and twisting and manipulating God's word. And this is what the churches today are doing. They're just, uh, they're picking, they're cherry picking verses, scriptures, their favorite scriptures out of the word of God, and they're making it fit, they're making it sound good, they're telling a couple jokes, making people laugh, you know. It's almost like, you know, when we go to church, it's almost like we go to be entertained, and we have to be really careful that we are not going to be entertained, okay? We are going to be changed, okay? We are going to hear the word of God. Now, we are not only gonna hear it, but we're gonna do it, so when we walk out of the building, we walk out of the synagogue, the temples, the churches, we should walk out feeling convicted or change. Um, going to church shouldn't just be something that we do for fun. Um, I think it's fun serving God, I really do, but we need to be careful um, to get in that position where we go to church um, just because we were taught to go to church on Sundays and it gives us all warms and warm and fuzzies and makes us feel like we're doing something good, okay? It's about relationship it's not about religion okay I have a message on that that I spoke on not long ago there's an important um, it's important not to have religion okay there's a spirit of religion out there and it's so strong today it's uh, you know just legalisms and I'm not saying I'm not saying that um, there are some things that are, are important or not important but I'm just saying if it's in the Bible and you can back it up by the word of God and it's not just something that man created or came up with uh, because they wanted to fit their religion then uh, I'm willing to listen and I'm willing to change um, I want to live by the word of God I don't want to live by the word of man okay so back to the word of God we need to be fed the word of God we need to be hearing the word of God okay the more that we are in the word of God the more we will walk the Word of God, the more that we will talk the Word of God, okay? The Word of God, the Holy Spirit, they'll work together to come and change your life in a drastic way. Your heart will be different, your mind will be different, okay? Because when we're in the flesh, we walk, we walk to our carnal mind and everything that we think about and everything that we do is pleasing to the flesh. We have a carnal mind, but when we walk in the Word, in spirit and in truth we worship God 
in spirit and truth in the word, God will come and pull back and peel back areas of our life that need to change. And trust me, there are areas of our life that need changed. When we begin to grow deeper roots in God, um, the soil will change. Um, uh, our world will change. Our environment start to change. We begin to look at things a different way. We begin to develop love for people in a way that we never had before. We begin to look around at the world and uh, we put aside our, our prideful selfishness and we begin to look around with love and mercy and we begin to look around and see the gracious and goodness of God and we begin to look around and look for things that we can do to make a change other than trying to satisfy our flesh. Okay, and God would do this um, in growth and in, in, in digging down deep, growing roots, all right? But we need the Word of God. That's how we grow. We need the Word of God. We need His Spirit. We need to be watered. We need baptism in Jesus' name, okay? We need the Son. We need Jesus, God, the Holy Spirit, all in one. We need that to grow. Hallelujah. God is good, but we need the Word of God. we got to stay in the Word of God. All right. Other seeds fell among thorns that grew up and choked out the tender plants so they produced no grain. Still other seeds fell on fertile soil, and they sprouted, grew, and produced a crop that was 30, 60, and even 100 times as much as, as he had planted. Then he said, anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. Later, when Jesus was alone with the twelve disciples and with the others who were gathered around, they asked him what the parables meant. He replied, you are permitted to understand the secret of the kingdoms of God. You are permitted to understand the secret of the kingdom of God. But I use parables for everything I say to outsiders so that the scriptures might be fulfilled. When they see what I do, they will learn nothing. When they hear what I say, they will not understand. Otherwise, they will turn to me and be forgiven. Then Jesus said to them, If you can't understand the meaning of this parable, how will you understand all other parables? The farmer plants seeds by taking God's word to others. Okay, we have to share the word of God. That's why I'm on here. And that's why no longer am I going to let the enemy or any man or any emotion tell me or make me feel bad or ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I've let it happen for so long, for too long. Okay, but God has called me to be a light, to be the salt, to be seasoning that I could save souls through him, not by anything I do, because I am just a wretched, dark, sinful nothing without him but in him i am a child of the most high god the almighty the prince of peace the king of kings the lord of lords hallelujah greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world praise god we have to realize that and and be reminded of that every day that we are greater in god than anything in the world so when the world tries to cast you down and cast you out and tell you that you're no good and that you've sinned in that slimy little dirtbag devil will, he is the accuser and he will try to accuse you to God about all the things that you should be ashamed of. But God will tell him I have forgiven him and God does forgive us, but sometimes our flesh gets in the way and we beat ourselves down to the point where we can't get back up. Um, but we have to get back up, okay? God has called you to spread the word. God has called you to be a planter. God has called you to be a farmer. Um, we have to work, okay? We have to work. Then Jesus said to them, If you can't understand the meaning of this parable, how will you understand the other parables? The farmer plants seed by taking God's word to others. The seed that fell on the footpath represents those who hear the message only to have Satan come in once and take it away. Okay, so as soon as as soon as we hear the word, okay, the enemy is going to right away 
right away try to take it away okay so when we go to church and we hear a powerful message and we got that a good feeling we feel after the spirit and we're feeling so good and we're feeling so strong i promise you when you get out of church the enemy is going to try to pluck that seed out okay and that's why when we when we're in church and we're feeling so good and we feel like we're going to conquer the world we're going to do great things we're going to go out and spread god's word and then as soon as we leave the church it's like we get distracted and we get those whispers in our ears and all of a sudden someone calls us and says you know our daughter's sick or our mom's in the hospital or or you know our cousin has cancer or you know you lost your job or this and this and this and this there's so many distractions and uh, there's so many distractions while you're sitting there trying to hear the word of God or you're tired or you're yawning or you can't keep focused. And this is because the enemy is trying to come and pluck out the seed because he's afraid that if that seed gets planted the way that God desires it to be planted in your life and that you actually let that seed um, fertilize and uh, let the water, you know, help it to grow and you dig down deep with them roots, the devil is afraid that you you will become what God has created you to be. All right. The seeds on the rocky soil represents those who hear the message and immediately receive it with joy. But since they don't have deep roots, we need to have deep roots. They don't last long. They fall away as soon as they have problems or are persecuted for believing God's word. All right. How many times has this happened to us? Being honest, how many times has, have we been on fire for God and uh, we, we just want to go on missions and we want to we want to be that fire, we want to be that light, and then all of a sudden problems arise. And then as soon as problems arise, it's like we forgot about that faith. We forgot about that fervent fire that we had. We forgot that we we wanted to, you know, put away the world and put away our flesh and and, and the faith that we felt in church, it, it all it all vanished, it all disappeared. It's like it's like it was there for a second and then then it went away. But this is what happens. This is the enemy will come and and suck up the seed and steal the seed like a bird. Seed that fell among the thorns represents others who hear God's word, but all too quickly the message is crowded out by the worries of this life. Okay, how many times have, has that happened? There's so many worries. We wake up and we're constantly worried. We wake up and we're paranoid. We're overwhelmed. You know, if we don't get our minds right and our spirit aligned with God, you know, when we first wake up, I guarantee you there's going to be something that's going to come your way in the morning. The devil's going to disrupt your day from the very start. If he can distract you, if he can get you to worry, the Bible says that don't worry. What good does worry do? It doesn't add anything to your life. Do not worry about tomorrow. There's enough trouble in today, okay? And the seed that fell on good soil represents those who hear and accept God's word and, and produce a harvest of 30, 60, or even 100 times as much as he had planted. All right? So when we allow the seed to be planted the way God has, had desired it to be planted, fertilized, watered, grow roots deep, dig down deep. Okay, this is, this is, uh, this is our job. We have to dig down deep. We can't just lie there. And expect that God's going to do all the work. It doesn't work that way. Okay, we have to plant the seed. It has to be watered. We need the sun. Okay. And God said he will prosper. He will prosper it. All right, parable of the lamp. Then Jesus asked them, would anyone light a lamp and then put it under a basket or under a bed? Of course not. That's silly. Can you imagine doing that? Especially if it was one by fire. You would catch the house on fire. You'd be idiotic. You don't make light to hide light. Okay, so find here that God is light. We are the light of God. We we represent the light of God. And just as much as a lamp wouldn't be hidden underneath the bed, we are not to hide the light of God. Okay, we are the word of God. We are the mouth pieces of God. We cannot shut up. We cannot be silent. We cannot be held back, but we have to shine, okay? We, we cannot go around with a dimmer. Let's get rid of the dimmer and just flick that light full blast on, okay? We're walking around, turning that knob down, turning it down to where it's barely on. We're walking around having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. We're walking around proclaiming that we're followers of God, but we're not willing to sacrifice 
crucify our flesh and bear our cross. Come on, somebody. All right, let's turn that dimmer off, throw it away, flick that switch on full and bright. You cannot hide the Word of God. Do not hide your light. Praise God. For everything that is hidden will eventually be brought into the on, into open and every secret will be brought to light. Okay? I know firsthand, guys. I've kept secrets. I've done wrong. I've lied. I've cheated. I've done some really bad things in my lifetime, guys. And I've thought I've gotten away with a couple of them. Uh, many things I've thought I've gotten away with. I'm telling you what. God has a way of making them come forward. And it will be open. Okay, you may be getting away with sin right now, but I promise you, the Bible says the wages of sin is death. Okay? You will not get away with unrepentant sin. Okay? Anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. Then he added, pay close attention to what you hear. The closer you listen, the more understanding you will be giving. Did you hear that? The closer you listen, the more understanding you will be giving. Okay, so we have to learn to listen. We have to learn to read the word. We can't just read it like a storybook, close the book and be done. We have to listen. So when we read the word, we need to be open to what God would tell us. We need to let the word come alive, let them words jump off the page and come alive, okay? Pay close attention to what you hear. The closer you listen, the more understanding you will be given and you will receive even more. To those who listen to my teaching, more understanding will be given. But for those who are not listening, even what little understanding they have will be taken away from them. Okay, so we have to listen. We have to pay close attention. We can't just ha hardly go into this. We can't just be reading the Bible while we're listening to secular music or trying to watch a movie and just, you know, <laughs> just go into it half heartedly. Okay, pay close attention, it says. Parable of the Growing Sea. Jesus said, also said the kingdom of God is like a farmer who scatters seed on the ground night and day while he's asleep or awake the seed sprouts and grows but he does not understand how it happens the earth produces the crops on its own first a leaf blade pushes through then the heads of wheat are formed and finally the grain ripens and as soon as the grain is ready the farmer comes and harvests it with a sickle for the harvest time has come pair with the mustard seed Jesus said, how can I describe the kingdom of God? What story should I use to illustrate it? It is like a mustard seed planted in the ground. It is the smallest of all seeds, but it becomes the largest of all garden plants. It grows long branches and birds can make nests in the shade. Jesus used many similar stories and illustrations to teach the people as much as they could to understand. In fact, in his public ministry, he never taught without using parables. But afterward, when he was alone with his disciples, he explained everything to them. Jesus calms the storm. As evening came, Jesus said to his disciples, Let cross, Let's cross to the other side of the lake. So they took Jesus in the boat and started out, leaving the crowds behind. Although other boats followed, but soon a fierce storm came up. High waves were breaking into the boat, and it began to fill with water. Jesus was sleeping at the back of the boat with his head on a cushion. The disciples woke him up, shouting, Teacher, don't you care that we're going to drown? When Jesus woke up, he rebuked the wind and said to the waves, Silence, be still. Suddenly the wind stopped, and there was a great calm. Then he asked them, Why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? The disciples were absolutely terrified. Who is this man? They asked each other. Even the winds and the waves obey him. Praise God. Sometimes we're in a storm. And it's only natural, it's flesh, it's carnal mind, um, especially, guys, when we're not in the Word of God. I cannot say this enough. Especially if we are not in the Word of God and we are not working in the Spirit, praise God. We will be tossed to and fro by the waves and the storms of this world, and we will allow the waves and the storms of this world to come and fill our vessel and it will drag us down, guys. Okay, it's gonna happen anyway. The Bible says he reigns on the just and the unjust, okay? Just because we are Christians and we walk with God doesn't mean that we get a free pass from the storms of the life. 
but being a Christian and following God and knowing God's word and knowing and having a relationship with him and being in love with God, we know that God will take care of his children without a doubt. That's called faith. Just a little bit, even that mustard seed that I just talked about, just a little bit of faith that we would know that the very same God that took care of these waves in this storm would take care of our waves in our storm. Guess what? The waves are coming, guys, and the storms are coming. Okay, we are not excluded from participating in waves or storms. But it's the power of knowing that when these problems come into our life and these sicknesses come into our life and these things that disrupt our life and distract us, when they come, when that worry comes, when that anxiety comes, when that depression comes, when, that, when, when fear even steps foot on the scene, we know that we could call out scriptures we know we could call out scriptures that say God has not given us a spirit of fear. You say that with authority. God has not given me the spirit of fear, but of love and a sound mind. No weapon formed against me, against me shall prosper. You say that with authority. Why? Because you know the word and you have it in your heart and you're able to speak it. And you allow the Holy Spirit to help you to remember that. But if you're not reading the word, guys, and you're not sowing the seed, and you're not allowing the seed to be watered and planted and fertilized, and you don't allow the roots to grow down deep. We need to be rooted and grounded in Christ. Okay, the reason why we need to be rooted and grounded is why. The winds will come. The winds will come. The storms will blow. But when we're rooted so deep, when we're dug down deep, we're just driven and clenched down into that soil, into that foundation that we are dug down deep into that solid rock, which is Jesus Christ, that there ain't no storm and there ain't no wind and there ain't no problem in this life. There ain't no wave that can come and pull us out because we're dug down deep. Yes, we may bend a little bit. We may, we may break a little bit, but we will not be plucked up because we are rooted and we are grounded. I pray that we become rooted and grounded in Christ. God bless you all. I hope you guys enjoyed this study.